All right. Let's keep right on moving. Everybody having a good time so far? All right. Good to hear. Um, I'd like to present our next speaker, who's going to talk about Tic Tac, Tic Tac, under attack. <laughs> That's a mouthful. Uh, this is Guy. Welcome, Guy. Hi. So, wait. Okay. So I'm Guy, um, I'm a software engineer at Checkmark, so the supply chain security team. Um, and first of all, I want to apologize for my accent. I'm originally from Tel Aviv, so uh, I'm not a US citizen. Um, let's go. So I'm going to talk today about TikTok. Now, why would someone talk about TikTok and a cybersecurity convention, right? I mean, it's a Chinese app, but still. Like, there's no meh, like hacker behind it normally. So I'm going to talk about how my work led me to TikTok as a security researcher at the supply chain security team. So one day was at, I was sitting in my office, you know, minding my own business, making coffee probably, and a coworker of mine asked me to help her research a malicious package that popped into our system. Now, to understand what a malicious package is, um, so I'm going to have to explain you what supply chain security means. So every software has its own supply chain, from dependencies to uh, build processes to uh, I know, packaging and uh, deploying everything. And it has countless risks along the entire way. We can have like a whole day about it. But today we're going to focus on dependencies. So each month, there are about more than a million packages uploaded online to the open source ecosystem, including Java packages, NPM, PyPy. I'm pretty sure everyone uses one of them. So what my team does is that we sit on that pipeline, and we analyze each and every package that is being uploaded. And we send it through automated engines, and eventually also like manually checking it and then adding it to a DB, so, that, so we can like remember what was malicious. So usually when a developer is downloading a package, he's asking for that one package. If I'm going to download requests from PyPy, I want only requests, right? I don't want anything else. But usually, there's another package behind it. And normally, it also looks like this, because each package uses another package that uses another package, and it's endless. So let's take a look at the real-life example. OK, so I'm going to install CNCJS. And as you can see, it has about 18, 800 um, dependencies. And ideally, you would want to go through each and every one of them to make sure there's no malicious code in your app. But nobody's going to do it, right? You have no time. So let's get back to our story about TikTok. So the package popped up. It was called PyOPCS. I, I needed to check why did it pop. I mean, we have a tag for everything, and the tag about it was uh, that it uses a attack vector called starjacking. What is starjacking? If we we'll take a closer look, you can see that it has about 50,000 stars. Now, for a new package, that's, that's an anomaly. So we needed to dive in. But first, I want to explain to you a bit. Can you click? I want to explain to you a bit about starjacking. So starjacking is a, an attack vector, as I said, and we're going to look at the two packages. One of them is malicious, right? They have also almost the same name. And uh, then this attack vector is called typosquatting, and we're not going to get into it. But 
they have the same name, and we need to know which, of, which one of them is malicious. And if we'll take a look, usually a, 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 a software engineer will look at the, at the stats of the package, if it's popular, and he'll decide by that. But here, the stats are the same. So how am I going to decide that? I need to take a look at the source code, maybe? But they have the same source code. But I'm guaranteeing you that one of them is malicious. And how is it malicious? Pumpy.io has a strange dependency. And if you take a closer look inside the dependency, I think that the checkpoint pop-up is the one that's going in my, uh, my presentation. So inside that uh, strange dependency, there's a payload that sends uh, the environmental variables to a webhook somewhere on the web. So as we saw here, using star jacking, someone hijacked uh, stars from a different package and uploaded a malicious payload to it. So as I told you, Pumpy.io is the malicious one. And still, how did they gain the same stars? I mean, usually someone at this point, the crowd says, OK, they used an army of bots. They did not. It's much more easier than that. Basically, I'm going to show you how it's done. So this is Package Lab. It's our, my team's Metasploit for uh, publishing malicious packages. And we're going to publish a new package. So the only thing you need to publish a package is an email account. So we're going to create a fake email account. And the username, password, doesn't really matter. And let's go to the next step. Cool. So we added the name to our package. It's supply chain demo. But you can do whatever you'd like. I mean, you can call it request without S. And then someone will probably, by mistake, uh, will download it. We're going to put a version and a description. Now, the only thing we need to do right now, it asks us for a GitHub, oh, for GitHub repo. So, oh. is it playing? Nope. So it asks us for a GitHub URL rep for a, of a repo, and we just paste a URL inside it. It believes us. Because as you can see, it just takes the amount of stars from the repo that we chose. Unfortunately, the demo is not going so well. But um, that's it. I'm going to put a payload inside of it, which is a, a, a dropper. We're going to skip it. And we're going to publish a package. So let's wait a second. Can you click it? And we're publishing the package. And voila, we published the package. And we already have, as you can see, 9,000 stars. And it's that easy. Why is it that easy? Because the ecosystem was not built for security. It was built upon trust. So at, when the, the guys behind PyPy built it, they just assumed that people would tell the truth. They did not vet anything. So I'm just literally pasting any link that I'd like, and they just believe me. So back to our story. I saw that they used starjacking. Now, starjacking itself is not malicious, right? They're just stealing some stars, but there's no payload behind it. There's no RCE. So it's just an indication. So I took a closer look. And inside of it, I saw a malicious payload that was very similar to a malicious payload of a password stealer called Wasp, which is hidden inside a PNG image using a base64 decryption and so forth, so on and so forth. I, dec I uh, decoded it. Can you click? Uh, and I saw it goes to an online URL and uh, downloads some um, executable file. And inside of it was literally the password stealer. This is the Wasp stealer. It was pretty big. We actually reported it, and it got deleted later. Um, so let's go back again to our story. I decided on this, this point to search for the package name on GitHub. But I don't know why it was the first time I did it. And I stumbled upon um, a repo called TikTok Unfilter API, which hosted a, a software claiming to do something about TikTok. And it also directed me to Discord. And this Discord community was huge. It has 30,000 members. And not only that, this repo also was trending on GitHub. Now, at this point, you, as a security researcher, you are supposed to ask yourself, why the hell is a malicious repository uh, trending on GitHub? And why does it have 30,000 people behind it? So I got into the community. Can you click? So I got into the community, and I saw a bunch of TikTok videos being sent there. 
Um, and those, those wasn't, weren't nice TikTok videos. Um, it was the invisible challenge. I don't know if you heard of it or not, but basically each month uh, TikTok has its cringiest uh, challenge, like the milk crate challenge or the cha-cha slide driving challenge, uh, which where people literally drove to the instructions of the cha-cha slide song, and it ha caused many injuries. Um, in this particular challenge, people would film themselves naked and use um, a filter on TikTok that blurs their body. Like, you can only see a silhouette. And this, if you take a look at the comment section, you, uh, not the comment section yet, this was pretty big, as you can see, there was 300 uh, million views to this challenge. And if you take a look at the comment section, you had two types of people. You had the trolls that said, oh, I can remove the filter. And there was the creeps that wanted to see the videos without the filter. <laughs> so this is where the hacker came into the game. Um, after we saw the Invisible Challenge videos, there were a bunch, I think dozens of uh, videos uh, uploaded to TikTok claiming they can remove the challenge. And they were directing us back again to Discord, the same Discord server that we saw. So yet again, I'm going back here and I'm seeing a YouTube video instructing people on how to download the package. Uh, the software, and the creeps are happy, right? But what did, what did we do after that? You know, there was a training GitHub repo, there was a, a, thousands of people uh, probably uh, being infected. How can, we, how can we solve the problem? So, we literally have to go and message, um, I forgot his name, Dustin on uh, PyPy, and tell him, hey Dustin, what's up? There's a malicious package, please remove it. Um, there's no CVE to issue on malicious packages. They're just getting deleted and uploaded again. So about five times in a row, we just reported and it deleted, reported, with the, they deleted it, until the attackers got sick of it and literally just put the malicious payload like bluntly inside their code. Um, after that, we also reported on the GitHub repo and it got deleted. And basically, that's the end of their story. So. I just told you a lot of scary things about the open source community and malicious packages. What can you do? So we believe that if we, we use a software, it's our responsibility to make sure that it's okay. You can't blame peop other people for malicious packages that you downloaded without verifying. I know it's hard to hear probably because we all do it, but I even the attackers behind these packages, they literally wrote, like in the Discord uh, community, it's open source, it's not a virus. Um, so there's that, and also we need to understand that malicious is not the same as vulnerable, because vulnerability is a logical flaw. You know, somebody by mistake, without uh, I don't know paying attention, made a mistake. Maliciousness is some someone intentionally doing something bad to harm other people. Um, so we can't issue a CVE on malicious package. We need to find another solution. And that's it, guys. Just don't take code from strangers without vetting. Thank you. Um, does anyone have a question? Thanks. Thank you.